Hello everybody, Christopher D. Schmitz uh, coming at you. I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, the Espa Sagas, the series of books that um, it picks up where the TSR books left off and uh, wanted to fill in a couple of little gaps for you all um, in knowledge. So some of you guys are probably very familiar with the, uh, the old classic uh, Cast of Fate, which is in the, um, the Dragon Dice series, which is the game that uh, that takes place. If you're watching this video, you probably know exactly what Dragon Dice is. Um, it was a huge collectible dice game back in the uh, mid-late 90s. Uh, had many different expansions. The game is still alive and well, and the, uh, the fiction series is as well. So anyway, uh, Cast of Fate uh, was recently re-released as a much, uh, much larger, slightly expanded uh, version of the original that um, that now is seamlessly integrates into the rest of the world uh, the in the Espa sagas. So um, this book you can notice has a red border around it. Uh, that is important. Um, so that book not only includes Cast of Fate, but it also includes um, the uh, the um, the Tome of Tarvanil and Heart of Stone and Flame, as well as one other uh, original story. Um, the original story that's in there takes place in the uh, the land of Syria, uh, which is where the um, the frost wings live. Uh, they're kind of this this bat, um, abominable snowman kind of uh, cross mix with the uh, uh, with like feline features. So anyway, there was a, there was another book um, that was re released, uh, Chill Wind. This is the paperback of the original edition of that. There was uh, a book um, with the, the first book that comes out in the series where some people recommend you start, Rise and Fall of the Obsidian Grotto. Notice it has the red cover. So the red covers are standalones. The red covers take place in, in what we call um, the, uh, uh, the First Age. So there's these two different divisions in history. It takes place right in the middle with the, the breaking of the world. Uh, during the Mage Storm Wars, if you remember this graphic from the Mage Storm expansion, um, so the Mage Storm Wars are a very pivotal war um, that, like I said, nearly broke all of Espa and uh, changed a lot of the dynamics, both of, of magic, of who is at play, what forces are at work in the realm of Espa. But the in the modern age, we have um, this is the. Uh, the Ashes of Ilusherai. Uh, this is this takes place in the kind of the contemporary period. Uh, band of heroes moving forward. Um, it has a gold trimmed cover. It is part of what's called the Relic Quest series. Book number two in the Relic Quest series uh, is just releasing, um, probably around the time that uh, that this video comes out. But this is the you can see the not for resale. Um, the, these are the the, the the preview version. So the covers are slightly different. So there is the, the Relic Quests series, which is gold. And then there is this silver trimmed. This is the re-release version of Chill Wind. So Chill Wind now has uh, this silver um, trim, the sequel to Chill Wind. Chill Wind would take place uh, a short period before the Ashes of Ilusherai series. The direct sequel, Eye of the Storm, takes place at the uh, at the same time as the Ashes of Ilusherai and Rise of the Champions books. So in this book and in the Relic Quests, so the Cyrene songs and the Relic Quests, they merge timelines and in the end the two groups of heroes wind up actually working together and then we have one cohesive storyline going forward with our main group of heroes after that. That will be after the next two books come out. Um, they are uh, they are titled Dracu War for the Relic Quest and The Secrets of the Shadowlands uh, will be the final book in the Cyrene songs. But back to this. Okay, so we've got, uh, this is like, so if the other books are like my Lord of the Rings, this is like the Silmarillion. These are, the, these are standalones, important events that take place far in advance of of the uh, the stories in the second age, there is the uh, rise and fall of the Obsidian Grotto, and then there is Cast of Fate. Uh, by the way, thinking thinking we're drawing out all of the history, all of the other uh, the little bits of lore. 
um, that the series has released over the last 25 years, Rise and Fall of the Obsidian Grotto. There are some stories that cover the flavor text only found in the, uh, the very difficult to get uh, Dice Commander's manual, um, especially in uh, uh, the story about um, Davy and Whisperwind, the, uh, the Selimari elf champion who, uh, who is, plays a pivotal role in the rise of the Firewalkers, the Empyreans. So, um, Rise of the, and Fall of the Obsidian Grotto, and then after the events of this book, another pivotal event uh, in Cast of Fate, um, where we learn a little more about the Gremlodond and the gnomes and what part they have had in the world, uh, and just some of the chaos of, uh, of dragons and dragon magic. And then there is a book that was released the very beginning there was was two books actually cast of fate there's this note army of the dead by ito van belkum was due out in january 1997 which of course uh did not happen because uh, tsr uh, had sold out to wizards of the coast around that time delayed the book uh, for a very long time and then a book um, by ed stark the time of champions uh, i've been able to be in contact with ito and ed uh, about some of the notes and the stuff that they had. You may know that Ido Van Belkum released um, a very limited run of what was his original uh, idea behind the Army of the Dead, uh, which doesn't really fit into the Espa sagas. So if you've, uh, if you've looked in the back of some of the Espa sagas uh, books, you'll see that it's noted for historical purposes, but it's not part of the canon. It's not part of the, uh, the stories. Um, but we've been in talks with him in order to uh, to make sure that we can pull in this content, revise it, modernize it, pull it into the Espa Saga so that it is there. Um, and we have uh, this right here. Some of you have seen me tease this online on the um, on the Discord, on the Facebook group. Uh, this cover here uh, is an homage to the original cover that was released. I remember seeing it in. I don't remember if it's Inquest or Wizard Magazine, which one, which it was. Um, but this is the uh, uh, was is a part of the cover art, I believe, off of the the old dragon screen, um, which I believe came, I think, with Heart of Stone and Flame. It's either that one or Tome of Tarvino. Well, you got those as a package of the original TSR set. So we we uh, I had a, a an artist um, do a rendition of this and then expand it because you couldn't see that in the original teaser. But I had them expand it to include this horde of undead that were attacking. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there's all these undead skeletons coming out of this, uh, um, this, this collapsing castle in the background, which I really, really liked. But I didn't really like the front cover. We used the same font and same design as in Cast of Fate. But it just, like, so much fire and it, it kind of... It, it didn't really draw you in as a cover goes, but this I really liked. So I commissioned another artist and I redid the, the fonts and the layout. So you can consider this a cover reveal for Army of the Dead, which is going to come out on Halloween of 2021. Um, and we had uh, the main the main figure is a Hecuva named Renata. And uh, so we had I had uh, an artist do Renata, uh, and then we used the back material with these uh, these undead coming out of the uh, coming out of the cemetery, trying to uh, kill all of the good guys and, and take over. And I really love the way the the fonts popped with this green glow and uh, how everything is kind of coming together. So the book is in process. Uh, it's currently still in edits and revisions. It will be out on time. Uh, I know. I know we were thinking January of 97, I was looking forward to a teenage me. Uh, and now I'm able to make sure that this thing is gonna get out on October 31. Uh, no specific word yet on what promo die is gonna come with it, but if you are a player, if you're a gamer, uh, and if you buy it from either TSR's, not TSR, SFR's web store, or in person at a gaming convention, from them or from me or the Tree Shaker Books website or me at a convention, uh, you will get a promo die. We are still nailing down the particulars, but be excited. It's finally coming. It's only it's only decades late, but it's going to drop this Halloween. 
um, and uh, I'm excited for you to see it. So if you like the music, by the way, that's playing in the background, um, the Relic Quests series uh, is available on Audible. You can feel free to burn those audio credits and uh, get um, get uh, not just Ashes of Ilusurai, but you can also get Rise and Fall of the Obsidian Grotto. And the music that's playing was scored by Jeff Person. He's the one who narrates uh, those two books. Um, and you can also get the, uh, the soundtrack album if you want to play that while you are gaming. Um, feel free to pick that up from him. I know he'll probably have some links on here to the audiobook that at audible.com. Uh, so feel free to make sure you check us out, www.authorchristopherdschmitz.com, or check out the Dragon Dice website for more.